Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz. I hope everyone's doing great today. I wanted to share an idea I came up with uh, to use these cute little car air fresheners that I got from Bath and Body Works. With the uh, pandemic that's happening right now, I'm not in the car as much and I wanted to see if I could find a way to utilize these in the house. I wasn't uh, sure it would actually work. Uh, I thought I would need the air conditioner or the heater to diffuse the scent, but uh, it actually works and gives off a very subtle uh, uh, scent in the house and it's not too overpowering and I really like it. So I thought it would be fun to make a little holder for it and I came up with this little unicorn. It has a little pouch in the back so it can slip inside. Let me show you here. And then of course a little hanger and I just have this hanging uh, on a handle on a cabinet in, in this workroom. And actually, if you don't have these little discs, it's not necessary to have it. You can make your own little air freshener with a mesh pouch. And I would just fill it with some scented beads. If you don't have scented beads, you can always grab some um, Epsom salts and add a uh, scented oil to that. That's always an option or your, you know, handy dandy potpourri, you know, whatever you want. There's plenty of different ways to make your own little air freshener. Anyway, so I thought this would be a fun one. This is a great one for uh, sash busting. It takes just a, a couple of hours in the afternoon, maybe not even that long. It's a lot of fun and yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I wanted to give you some information on the hook and yarn size so you can gauge. Uh, this is a 3.75 millimeter hook and I like to use that with uh, Stylecraft Special DK yarn. Stylecraft Special DK is a, a double knit uh, weighted yarn and I believe that's a four ply. The equivalent to that would be a light worsted weight or a sport weight. Uh, I think the recommended size of a hook is usually a four, but I like to go a little bit smaller. I did do about four rounds here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four rounds on this, but depending on what yarn or hook you use, this may come up a bit smaller or bigger. And that's totally fine because you can either add rounds or reduce rounds to uh, fit your needs. To get started, we're going to work on the face or the head. We're making a pouch, so we need to do two sides to this. We're going to be working in an amigurumi style method here. Uh, so go ahead and create a magic ring to start. If you don't feel comfortable doing the magic ring, by all means, go ahead and do a chain four with a slip stitch to secure. The reason I say that is because, first of all, it's camouflaged on the front, and we want this to be a bit lacy because we want the scent to come through, so it doesn't need to be that tight. Uh, if you do do the chain four slip stitch, go ahead and chain one. That will give you some wiggle room to make your half double crochets. We're going to work in multiples of eight here, so we're going to do eight half, half double crochets. Uh, if you are looking for UK terms, they are down in the description box below. This is a US term. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now at this point we would normally secure with a slip stitch, but we're not going to here. We're going to keep working in rounds. So I would recommend a stitch marker of some sort. If you don't have one of these, a piece of yarn works just as well. And I always just use a piece of yarn. Okay, so go ahead and get your stitch marker. And before we start working on round two, we'll slip that right there. Okay, so we have our stitch marker in place and now we're going to do what is called an increase. We're going to do two half double crochets in each stitch around. Okay, we want to make sure that we have 
16 by the time we get around our circle. Okay, so we're at the end here and I see my stitch marker so I know I've come to the end. And before you remove that, go ahead and count and make sure that you have 16. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so we have our sixteen. Go ahead and move your stitch marker before the next stitch that you're going to work into. You are going to work into that stitch right there closest to where you just finished or closest to your stitch marker. Now we're going to work up to 24. So we will be doing an increase again, but we will do um, one single, one half double crochet, two half double crochet. One, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. One, two, one, and two. And that's always a good indication to help you know that you're on track there because you always finished with the increase and that gives you a clear idea of when you've made it all the way around. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment to make sure that you have your 24 and then we'll continue on. Okay, so we have made sure that we have 24 stitches. We've moved our stitch marker over and we're ready to increase and make sure that we have 32 stitches when we're all finished. So the pattern this time will be one, one, two. So that'll be one half double crochet in the first two stitches. And then on the third stitch, we will do two half double crochets. So here we go. One, one, two. And repeat all the way around. One, one, two. One, one, two. Okay. So we did our pattern of one, one, two. Make sure that you have 32 stitches. And if you do, go ahead and slip stitch into that first chain and we are completed. Okay, so we're ready for the fun stuff now. Go ahead and pick your horn color. I'm going to use yellow. Okay, so pick four areas on your disc and I'm going to pick this area here where I fastened off just so I can camouflage that a little bit. Uh, since this is a single crochet fastening on, I've already put one hook on, uh, one loop on my hook with my slip knot and that can help me create my first uh, single crochet. There we go. One. Two. Three. And four. Go ahead, chain one and turn your work. So what we do is we're going to do one more round of single crochets. Make sure to get into that very first space there. Let's repeat what we just did. One, two, three, and four. Chain one and turn over. Okay, at this point we want to start uh, tapering it down. So we're going to skip the first space 
and we're going to work into the next one. Continuing with, continuing with single crochet, so that's one, two, and three. Chain one, turn around. Now we're going to do two, so skip that first one and go into the next space and single crochet. One, two, chain one, turn around. We only have one left because we're going to skip. We're essentially decreasing without each round. Okay, so in here we go. One, chain one, switch over. And now I'm going to slip stitch into this little pocket here to give myself a point. And there is our horn. Now we are going to come back later and give it a nice finishing touch to make that look a little bit neater. But for now, let's just stop there. Go ahead and clip. And what I'm going to do, instead of doing a knot, you could just you know thread through and make a knot. I'm actually going to take this now and just darn it in. Okay, so it's time to work on the ears and we're going to do the ears just like we did the horn but just a little bit smaller. I'm going to add a slip knot to my hook. That is going to serve as my first single crochet. I'm going to count three from the horn and I'm actually going to include the uh, stitch there that I used for the horn. One, two, three. Okay. So one. two and three, chain one, turn over, repeat. You're going to go right into each stitch three times doing single crochets. One, two, three, chain one. Now we're going to reduce, turn around, and instead of going into all three, we're just going to go into two. One single crochet, two single crochets, chain one, one single crochet, and we are done. And I'm going to do a chain, and you could either slip stitch into the side here if you want to make your point. Let's see how that looks. I do it different, it just depends on my mood. You could do that or you can go back to where you did your chain one and then just cut and then take that and darn it into the side of your into the side of your ear the same as the tail here i'm going to darn that into there to give it some stability and remember, this doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to go around the edge with um, a finishing touch. Okay, so just do that on both sides. Okay, so it's time to work on the snout. And what we're going to do is we're essentially going to do the same thing we did with the circles, but we're making a half circle. So instead of eight, we're going to single crochet, or I'm sorry, half double crochet, four into our slip ring. One, two, three, and four. Okay, tighten your circle or tighten your slip ring chain one, flip your work over. Now we are going to do two half double crochets in each 
of these uh, chain stitches. So you're doing an increase in each chain across. Chain one. Okay, so now we want to increase by four again. So we are going to do the one, two, one, two. So that's one half double crochet in the first stitch and then an increase in the second stitch. One. Two. One. Two, one, and two. Chain one. Okay, now we are going to continue with our increase one more time, and this time it's going to be. Uh, a half double crochet in the first two stitches and then an increase in the third. Okay. One, one, two, One, one, two, one, one, Two. There we go. So we have the start of our muzzle. Go ahead and fasten off and we will do the bridge. Okay, so we finished our muzzle and now we're going to work on the little bridge between the eyes here. You could work it on the base of or on the top of your muzzle here, but I find these stitches to be a bit of a pain to work into. So I just do it separately and stitch it on. Um, when I do the muzzle. I'm going to chain three. This will be a bit fiddly, I warn you now, because it's so tiny, but I'm going to do a half double crochet into the second stitch from the hook. One. And two. Then I'm going to chain one and turn. And now I'm just going to keep repeating this. I'm going to do two half double crochets back and forth until I reach the desired height that I want. One. Two. Chain one. Turn my work and then just keep repeating this and I will see you at the end. Okay, so the center portion is all finished and I left a bit of uh, tail on both ends so I can easily just uh, stitch that on in just a moment. And before I go ahead and start doing that, let's go ahead and uh, put some suggestion for nostrils on our muzzle here. Here's a quick tip. I have a terrible time threading these uh, needles, darning needles, and so I end up with a bunch of strands and it just annoys the heck out of me. So I just use this uh, 
needle threader and it really saves me a lot of time in the long run. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and find what looks like a logical place to add a nostril. Oops. There's one. And just pick a darker color than what you're using, just something that will uh, stand out a bit. And then try to match. Just use the little holes or gaps between your stitches as a guide. And as you can see, it's slightly different from this one. I think I went slower, but you get the idea. That works for me. I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's move on to stitching to our unicorn's face. And this is just really simple now. We're just going to uh, be very loosey-goosey with it. I'm going to tie the nostrils just very loosely here. Okay, so now I'm going to just take advantage of these tails and start stitching the muzzle and the middle portion uh, to the front of the unicorn. And I'm not going to bore you with making you watch me join all of this. Uh, I would just say to stay within this parameter right here so you don't go over these chains here because we're going to use those to join to the pouch backside and just keep darning until you get this uh, the way you would like it to uh, be attached. I usually just make sure to stay with the back stitches just to make it a little less noticeable. That's about it. Very easy. So I will see you in just a moment. Right, so I'm finished with the muzzle and the bridge and uh, like I told you, I wasn't going to worry about the stitches showing through on the other side. You certainly could make that uh, hidden. You would just use the top portion of your, your stitches here instead of going all the way to the back. But as you can see, that's nicely uh, attached. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on the hair. And this is so ridiculously simple and effective. And I did four of the curly locks and one bang. And uh, just to quickly tell you, I did uh, varying lengths of these. I did, uh, some of mine were chain 12s and some were uh, chain 15. I may have even done a chain 10, but you can play with it and see what lengths you like. I'm just gonna do a chain 10 here. The longer ones were in the back and then the shorter ones were on the front. So we're, I'm going to chain 10 for this one. One, two, this one will work well on the front maybe. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Starting with the second chain from the hook, I'm going to do an increase. And that means I'm going to do two of the same stitch into that uh, chain. I'm doing two single crochets and I'm going to do that all the way along in every single stitch. This is what will give the curling effect. Just go all the way down, doing two single crochets. Your stitch is going to stretch. You are going to see a little bit of a, a gap here, but once it starts curling, it doesn't matter. And then when I get to the end, I just slip stitch and call it done. And there's your curly cue. And then I just, or curly locks, and I just twist it to give it its shape. And there you go. For the bang, we're gonna work a little bit differently. We're just going to give a little bit of a curly bang here. 
So go ahead and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Working on the second chain from the hook, do a slip stitch. Okay, and then in the next chain, we're going to do a decrease. And this is what it looks like. We're going to go in, pull through, into the next chain, go in, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three. That is a decrease. Now we are going to do a, an increase into the next stitch. This will give it a bit of a curve. And then in the next stitch, we're just going to do a regular single crochet. And then in the final one, we are just going to do a slip stitch and call it done. Okay, so we're finished with the front and we've done the bangs and um, a little bit of curly locks. I have three remaining, but I'm going to hold off on those until we attach the um, back of the pouch to the face. And then that way I can kind of uh, play with where I want those to land or lay on the side of the uh, face there. If you have safety eyes, go ahead and grab those and, and attach your eyes. I don't have those. I just have some black yarn. Dark brown would work just as well. And I'm just going to go in now and find a place that looks like it might work for an eye. I'm not pulling tightly. I want it to be loose. You could be really fancy with this and do some white for the background if you had it and then a little piece of white um, to give the eye some sparkle. But I'm just doing this here just to give you a quick idea of, of how I went about this. I think I did about three passes with uh, black on each side. But for now, I'm just going to do that just to show you what I'm talking about and uh, keep moving on. So we are ready to attach the back to the front now. And what I'm going to use is a slip stitch join. Uh, the reason I'm choosing a slip stitch join is because when I tried a single crochet, it made the face too big. So with the slip stitch, it's just going to give it a pretty little edge. And I also found that if I slip stitch into the spaces right below the ear on both sides, that gives you plenty of room to uh, get your little scented disc in there. I did go ahead and use stitch markers, but that isn't necessary. When I did one for myself, I didn't bother with that, but I just wanted to make sure that I keep everything in line uh, since I know you are watching. And it does make it a little bit easier. Okay, so go ahead and fasten on how you like best. And now just start going into each chain. Make sure you get all four of your loops. Pull your yarn through and then just slip stitch. And make this fairly loose. Don't get too tight with this because uh, you don't want it to pull and buckle. Um, you'll get a, a feel for it very quickly. Okay. And we're just going to go all the way around doing this. Take your time, put on some nice music or some Netflix or something and just go all the way around. And then I will see you when we get to the ear because I want to show you um, how to do this on the ear as well to uh, make it a little bit neater. Okay, so we've gone all the way around with our slip stitch edge and I've come to my first ear and you have a choice here. You can uh, now go to a single crochet if you want to or you can stick with the uh, slip stitch. If you want your ear to be a little bit bigger, then I would do this uh, single crochet. I'm just going to continue uh, doing the slip stitch and as you can see, it's not a very easy uh, edge to work into. This is a place now that you're just going to sort of wing it, okay? You're just giving it a little bit of an edge. So I'm just going in in spots that seem logical to me 
and I just want to neaten it up a little bit and once I get to the ear I'm going to do one there and then fairly close I'm going to do another there we go and like I said don't get too tight with this And then I'm at the end here, so I'm just going to do a slip stitch. And then I will have to fasten on to do the other ear, but I'm just going to do the same thing for the ear, other ear. And I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, horn as well. I may do a single crochet, but I'll play with that in just a moment. and. Uh, see what I like better because I might want to make my horn look a little bit more um, it might want to make it look a little bit bigger than these ears here okay I'll be right back okay so I'm starting to lose light here so I just want to let you know that I went ahead and went all the way around with my slip stitch and I did the same for the horn as well and I'm going to go ahead now and just attach my curly locks to the side. Now that I'm pretty much finished, I'm going to tack that down a little bit better. And the final thing that I need to do is add a um, hanger. Now for this, I just chain 20 and attach to the back. I'm going to do the same again, but I would recommend if you want to have a little bit more control over um, where you hang it, you could certainly just attach one side, put a little loop on the edge or the end of your chain here and then put a button okay that it can uh, hook onto, and then that way you can uh, maybe even hang it in the car or on a different type of handle if you wanted to but for just for this tutorial i'm just going to do the same chain of 20 and attach it to the back Okay, everyone, we're all finished. I went ahead and added the chain to the back, the chain hook. That's just a 20 chain hook that I just darned in with the ends. Like I suggested earlier, a button would work really well there so you'd have more control of your hanger. I went ahead and darned in or ta uh, tacked in the remaining couple of curly locks. I still need to tack that in a little bit better, but you get the idea. And I think that's about it. So then at this point, you would just go ahead and peel your uh, scented disc or pop in your little sachet and you are good to go. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was very fun to make. Um, thanks again for jo joining me to play a little bit of hooky and I hope to see you again very soon. Okay, bye.